Okay, good evening, councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's cabinet meeting. Uh, and we will start with apologies for absence. I have apologies from councillor Steve Doyle, uh, who has a parents' evening, and apologies for councillor Farrell, who is delayed in traffic but is making his way here as we speak. Uh, also, like to take this opportunity under uh, under the first item to welcome councillor Summers. Uh, as a new cabinet member uh, to your first cabinet meeting. So welcome, Councillor Summers. Okay, item two on the agenda is minutes of the previous meeting. Is it your wish I sign those as true record? Councillor Pritchard moves. Councillor Bailey seconded. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Can you please consider those as a signed record? Item three on the agenda is declarations of interest. Nobody has notified me of any. Uh, anybody got any to raise this evening? Nope. Okay. Item four on the agenda is matters referred to Cabinet in accordance with overview and scrutiny procedurals. Uh, we have a number this evening, so I'd like to invite uh, Councillor Claymore, the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Chair, to come and present her recommendations. Thank you for inviting me along this evening. There's two recommendations from the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. Um, I think they're pretty self-explanatory, but I will give you a little bit of background for the first one. Um, the committee has been receiving progress updates from the Midlands Partnership Foundation Trust. Um, we had We've had three up to now, and the last meeting was on the 25th of January of this year. Um, and at each of the meetings, committee have been very concerned about lack of or transparency of communications of what the partnership offer. Um, so following on from that, the committee thought we would um, put the recommendation through, as it says in, to, in the um, reports, that the committee recommend to Cabinet consider the feasibility of producing a wellbeing portal on Tamworth Borough Council website linked to the Midland Partnership Foundation communications team. Okay, uh, yes, we'll deal with that one first. Thank you, thank you very much, Councillor Claymore. Um, in, ter in terms of the ask there uh, to consider the feasibility, uh, I would say that there's, there's no problem in Cabinet taking that away uh, and, 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 and doing that very piece of work. Uh, it's interesting, I was at a meeting earlier today and we were talking about uh, access via uh, technical technology and, and via websites uh, and we were talking about local government specifically at the time. Uh, and the comment I raised uh, this morning was actually during the last two years, we have learnt a massive amount about joint communications uh, during the pandemic. Both local government and the health service were producing the same messages and pointing each other to, to the same places. Uh, so, so actually, we know we can do it. Uh, so, uh, so bringing this this evening, I think, just sort of pulls that together from fr from your side and, and from the, the well-being stuff that, that you've dis discussed. Um, that's that's my my feelings on it. Is I I think we should take away that piece of work and cons consider that feasibility. Cabinet members, do you have any questions or any further comments on that before I move anything? No particular question, but I think you've, you've picked up the main points and the main thread of, of that, I think, yeah, more or less looking at. Okay, anybody else? Okay, um, in that case, I will move uh, that Cabinet accepts that first recommendation. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Summers beat you to it. It's because he's new and fresh. Um, all those in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. So that is carried. So you can go back to your committee and tell them we've accepted that first Thank recommendation. You. Thank, Thank you very much. I think it'll be um, good locally if we can do that. So the second recommendation follows on from the presentation that we had, or the report that we had from Reset and Recovery. Um, and basically the recommendation is that Cabinet consider another location other than that of the assembly rooms for interim front of house customer services as quickly as possible. We didn't feel that the 
that was the appropriate place for people to be going along and talking about sensitive and personal issues. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if, if I may lead on this one as well. Um, in terms of, of the, the recommendation as written, uh, the recent recovery item for the committee recommends that Cabinet uh, consider another location. Now, whilst that is a Cabinet role, the Cabinet forms the board for the, uh, for the Reset and Recovery uh, programme. Uh, so what I would suggest is actually we do take on that, uh, th that challenge of scrutiny and we do have a look at the uh, options, but in terms of uh, the recommendation, uh, and moving a motion, I would suggest that actually uh, that we that that we ensure this is an item on the next R and R board meeting, and we pick it up at the board and then report back through cabinet and through through scrutiny. But but we pick it up as a as an agenda item at the next board meeting. Um, any further questions or comments, Councillor Pritchard? Thank you. I think yeah, it's um it's an interesting recommenda recommendation to make. Obviously, the whole customer service is tied up in the wider reset renewal program at the moment. So yeah, it's something that we'll need to discuss with you know with all the relevant information in front of us. Thank you, Mr. Pritchard. I think that's why I wanted it discussed at board rather than a standalone separate conversation because it fits in with the the, the, the broader program. Councillor Claymore. Yeah, can I just ask when that next meeting is? He looks across at officers quickly. It's, it's imminent anyway, yeah. So we'll, I can confirm that date. Yeah, just when so I can report calendar. back to committee uh, at our next meeting. Yes, yeah, okay, no problem. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, any other questions or comments on that? In that case, uh, I'll move that as a motion that it's included on the board. Uh, Councillor Bailey, are you seconding? Excellent, all those in favour? That's carried. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. We'll take that up at board. Uh, we will report back, and in the interim time, I'll make sure I get that date uh, for the board meeting to you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Barrett. Ch Chair, yeah, can I just say the uh, the, the next uh, board meeting is on the twenty third, which is next Wednesday. Thank you, Councillor Claymore. Okay, the next recommendations we have from. Uh, scrutiny are from the Corporate Scrutiny Committee uh, and I will invite Councillor Steve Pritchard to come and present the recommendation. Thank you Mr Chairman, Councillors, Officers, uh, good evening. Um, this follows on from our last um, Corporate scrutiny committee meeting whereby post implementation review of my Tamworth portal um, revealed that there were some considerable delays potential overspends um, because we felt that there was an issue with the procurement process so the committee recommends to cabinet that the audit and governance committee are requested to look at the tendering process used by the council uh, with a particular regard to the scoring mechanism process and it will report back to cabinet on its findings um, the background is a little bit uh, of um, it was a company that we'd used before they came in said they could deliver it quickly at a uh, an economical price uh, and apparently none of it was true it is working it is up and running now and it's working very successfully but I think we need to look at the processes around that uh, selection thank you thank you Councillor Pritchard um, in, in front of me I don't have the details of that particular project so I, so I, I wouldn't like to comment on it uh, in terms of uh, audit and governance committee having a look at the process I think that's where it ought to sit uh, in, ter in terms of process uh, but uh, open to any questions or comments from cabinet councillor Bailey yeah I mean I I think um, with it going to audit and governance looking at the process is fine I would just say actually there, there wasn't an overspend on the project it was more the length of time that was took from the beginning to the end but I would you know 
happily support it going to audit and governance the, the process. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Thank you for that clarity on the on the overspend and the and the timeline. Councillor Pritchard. I would say if we just ask uh, Demo Services to, to pass that request on to the committee and they can pick that up. Okay. Anything further? Did Councillor Summers want to come? Yeah. Um, I was going to say a um, little bit of experience of audit and governance. So I'll just say that. I'll be honest and don't necessarily feel it's the right place for it. I think scrutiny could have done that themselves, um, in all honesty, um, and looked into that. But if the committee feels it's appropriate to take it to audit and government, so I, I wouldn't personally say no, but I, I don't think that kind of committee set up for this. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll happily let audit and government take it on and let the chair decide on that. Okay, thank you, Councillor Summers. Uh, I think in the interests of the recommendation from scrutiny, uh, it's that uh, it's that audit and governance be requested to look. So, so we'll give them first punt at, uh, at first refusal if they if they wish is is how I would suggest we pr progress based on the recommendation. Can I come to Councillor Stephen Pritchard first, and then Councillor Rob Pritchard? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I, I if I can say, there was a little debate at uh, corporate scrutiny with members of both corporate scrutiny and audit and governance and it would appear that audit, audit and governance wanted to look at this hence the recommendation to come to audit and governance via the cabinet thank you All right, okay thank you and thank you for that clarity councillor rob pritchard thank you mr chairman i think uh, perhaps based on the comments would it be useful to actually have it report back to the scrutiny committee directly as opposed to cabinet so they could take that finding straight back to the committee so sorry to clarify and then the committee can look at it and if they wish to make then further recommendations to cabinet on the back of that that was the only thing i was thinking was it depends on the outcomes of that piece of work i thought you indicated to speak then Councillor pritchard <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that would depend on the outcomes of that piece of work. So, so for now, I think it uh, it would be up to us to to request audit and governance committee uh, take a look at the tendering process, and then we take it from there. If they if they take it on, then whatever they find either comes back to ourselves or gets picked up by scrutiny as, as part of the uh, as, as part of the process. Okay, so are we happy? with supporting that we recommend to audit and governance, or sorry, we request that audit and governance uh, look at the tender process used by the council with particular regard to the scoring mechanism process and report back. Councillor Prichard seconded, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you very much Councillor Prichard and thank you for your time and your vote. Thank you Mr Chair. Okay, so moving on to item five on the agenda is question time. Uh, so this is questions from members of the public. We have received one question uh, from Mr. Loxton, uh, who is unable to attend this evening. Uh, so the chief executive uh, will read out Mr. Loxton's question. Thank you, Chair. Um, question from uh, Mr. Loxton. Loxton is directed to the portfolio hold for environment and leisure. Uh, and asks, I'm sure councillors would agree with me, it's amazing to see so many volunteers picking up litter in our town and I'm sure they would like to take the opportunity to thank them all. Can I ask, as a result of the amount of litter now being collected by these groups and individuals, if the cost of litter removal spent by the council themselves has reduced? And if so, how's, how that money saved has been utilised? Thank you. Thank you, Mr Barrett. Uh, councillor Robert Pritchard, would you like to respond to that question? I would like to place on the record the Council's thanks to everyone who gives up their time to pick up litter. As a proud member of Tamworth Volunteer Litter Pickers who've collected around 8,000 bags of litter, I'd like to praise the ordinary men, women and children from the town who roll up their sleeves to tackle the litter and fly tipping issue that plagues our society. The activity of voluntary litter pickers doesn't save the Council any money. Indeed, the authority is planning on spending more money on cleaning the town and we're hiring new staff to help clean our HRA estates. However, the work of voluntary litter pickers does greatly enhance and complement the authority's efforts to tackle litter. Less litter on the streets means that our staff can walk further on their litter picking rounds. They can also cleanse larger areas when supported by community litter pickers. Voluntary litter picking also means that some areas can be visited less frequently by council staff, 
due to community litter picking being so effective and the council can redeploy litter cleansing staff elsewhere in the borough. Finally, volunteer litter pickers also clean areas that are outside of the council's responsibility, greatly adding to the cleanliness of Tamworth. We are also looking to do some research with members of Tamworth volunteer litter pickers to assess if areas litter picked by volunteers stay cleaner for longer. I also want to add that volunteer litter picking provides real encouragement to our street scene operatives who are so thankful for the community's efforts. During the height of the pandemic, the street scene team was stretched to the limit, so without the hundreds of local volunteers, it would have struggled to keep Tamworth clean. There are several dedicated litter picking groups that operate in and around Tamworth, as well as many other community, voluntary groups, schools, organisations, businesses and clubs that do litter picking. To each and every single volunteer litter picker in Tamworth, I say thank you and please do keep up the amazing work. brings us on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, however, before we consider that, I'd like to move uh, that we shuffle the agenda around and move item 10 uh, to the next item and we deal with that prior to dealing with the corporate vision, uh, priority plan and budget and MTSS. Uh, so I'll, I move that we elevate that item to the agenda. Councillor Farrell indicated in support, so all those in favour? That is carried, thank you very much. So we will now consider item 10 on the agenda, and that is the release of capital contingency. Councillor Robert Pritchard. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, the authority is adopting a new vision, and with the new vision comes new priorities for the authority, and uh, part of that work is uh, investing in many of the town's smaller play areas. Uh, some of them are long overdue uh, refurbishment and investment so we're beginning a program uh, of regenerating these smaller play areas um, so we request a release uh, and allocate fifty thousand pounds of capital towards um, that very uh, project um, and we will form part of a, a wider program of regenerating the smaller play areas uh, so I'm happy to take any questions from members on that uh, but we will also be um, looking uh, and waiting with bated breath the Rosper report as well for any urgent works that need doing to the play areas and again some of this funding will go towards that. Okay, thank you very much Councillor Pritchard. Uh, any questions or comments from Cabinet members? Okay, everyone's silent. Uh, Councillor Pritchard, uh, you've suggested that forms part of a wider programme so can you just give us a, a bit of an explanation as to how and when this is going to be released? Yep, so um, this funding will form part of the uh, upcoming medium-term financial strategy. Um, we are also allocating more, capi uh, more capital as part of the budget process, and I say we're looking to um, rebuild a number of the smaller play areas as well as have money aside for um, money aside for some of the urgent repairs that might be coming up as part of the ROSPA report. Um, so there's not a huge amount to add, but I'm going to move slightly different recommendation one to that's on the agenda, so I'm happy to take any questions first before that. Councillor Farrell, you indicated? Yeah, no questions. Uh, just a comment to say um, it's a great idea. Who wouldn't want to support um, play areas being refurbished? So, uh, fully support. Can you fix your microphone? I can't fix it now. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Pritchard. Thank you, Mr Chairman. My microphone is working just fine. Um, so I'll move a slightly uh, amended recommendation one. Uh, members approve the release of the £50,000 from capital contingency budget to go into the 22-23 capital programme that is due to be approved by uh, Cabinet and full Council. OK, uh, I would like to second that motion. So it's, uh, it's to include the 50k in the capital programme for next year. And that's why we're dealing with it before we get onto the budget process. So I'll second that. Uh, all those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. I will now move back to the original agenda uh, and we will move to item six, which is the consideration of the corporate vision, priorities plan, budget, and MTFS. Sorry, medium term financial strategy for those that don't like acronyms. Uh, so the recommendation before us uh, is that we approve uh, the general fund budgets uh, and they're to be revised to include forecast savings and the underspending quarter three of the QPR3 report, which we'll see later in the agenda. 
Cabinet members have worked hard on the budget side of this over the last few months, so you're all aware of what's in there. Uh, we also have within those papers the, uh, the new corporate vision, uh, and I think it's actually dubbed a, a vision on a page, uh, which covers three pages. Uh, but uh, I think it's important to say we've, we've spent a lot of time as, uh, as, as all members uh, in creating that vision and that priorities uh, for the next three years for the, for the corporate plan, which we'll get next month. Uh, so nothing further to add at this stage. Uh, the recommendation will take this to full council for full debate on Tuesday. Uh, so uh, move the recommendation. Any questions or comments? Okay, Councillor Pritchard seconds. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. More on Tuesday. Uh, item seven is the quarter three performance report. Uh, this has been through scrutiny, uh, as it always does. Uh, went through the, the last uh, corporate scrutiny committee. Uh, it's in front of members. Uh, you've all fed into it. Uh, I've already highlighted the projected underspend of 895k, uh, which will have an impact on our, uh, on our on our MTFS going forward. Any questions or comments or anything anybody would like to raise on the quarter three performance report? No. In that case, I'll move that report. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Pritchard. All those in favour? That is carried. Thank you very much. Okay, item eight on the agenda uh, is another one of mine. This is the establishment of the Staffordshire Leaders Board. This has been trialled in the press. Uh, and been discussed on a, on a number of occasions publicly over the last few months. Uh, the establishment of a Staffordshire Leaders Board, uh, as is detailed in the papers, formalises uh, the long-standing informal uh, meetings we have as leaders and chief execs of Staffordshire. What this does is takes that on to the next step uh, and actually creates, a, rather than an informal meeting, creates a joint committee uh, so we can look at some of the wider uh, priorities and wider aspects uh, that affect the people that live across Staffordshire. Particularly, uh, my interest would be those that live in and work in Tamworth. But by working together, we can tackle some of the big ticket issues that we've not been able to do in the past. Uh, the establishment of the Leaders Board also links in uh, with the noises that we're hearing from government at the moment uh, about changes to uh, shared prosperity funding, levelling up, uh, and devolution, uh, and this is the Staffordshire's answer uh, to to our question, uh, to the government's question about our governance, uh, and this pulls us all together in a, in a partnership working framework, which we've informally successfully done for a number of years, uh, but actually this is about uh, formally doing that. The important thing is, each member authority will <coughs> will maintain its own sovereignty, so this is not about taking powers away from the uh, from the boroughs and districts and county council. It's about drawing more powers down from government where possible and actually collectively tackling some of the, some of the big ticket issues. Uh, Mr Barrett, do you have anything to add to what I've said? No, I just think it's a, it's a very good opportunity for Staffordshire and uh, it just enhances the already good collaboration between other districts and counties, which I think has been demonstrated by a lot of the things that have happened over certainly over the last three to five years. So it's certainly a, a very positive step. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And if I can add to that point, uh, the, the collaborative working we've had uh, with the districts, boroughs and county council over the last, uh, the last couple of years during the pandemic specifically uh, has really shown that actually we, we can tackle some big stuff really well uh, and we can tackle that big stuff really well locally. Uh, don't want to say too much, but uh, in terms of the stuff that was, uh, that was done within that partnership locally, it was delivered well. In terms of the stuff that was delivered nationally, there, there were a number of issues. Uh, so for me, local is where is where we should be. Uh, Councillor Pritchard, you indicate. Yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, it is indeed a, an opportunity for Staffordshire. I know a, a lot of the other authorities in Staffordshire have already approved um, this report uh, just due to the timings of committees. Um, so it's important we, we do this and we get involved in this. Um, in terms of the structure of the board, I think it's really important we've got the right people in the right roles in that board um, to make sure that we've, we're making the most of the opportunities. Um, you know, I know where devolution has been taking place with single elected individuals with some of these powers, it, it's worked well because it's efficient. So that's our challenge to make sure that we're replicating the successes of where that's gone to an individual body and we're, you know, we're, we're not overcomplicating it. I know Staffordshire can rise to that challenge and I think that, that's got to be the key focus of the, of the Leaders Board. 
Thank you. And if I may respond to to that, uh, what we what we tried to do when we were discussing this formalisation, uh, and we spent a lot of time on this, was looking at particularly uh, the West Midlands Combined Authority, uh, which, uh, as you know, I represent Tamworth Council on, uh, and looking at their governance models. Uh, and what we've tried what we've tried to do is is look at best practice, uh, learn from that best practice, but do it in a way that doesn't create an additional set of uh, 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 of infrastructure and an additional back office. So what we're trying to do is achieve those efficiencies in terms of decision making and uh, and, and operation, uh, whilst within our own current finance envelope. Uh, and and what we we were very much aware of is when you look at uh, elected mayors or elected individuals, uh, police, fire, and crime is another example. Uh, they often come with a large bill attached to their admin support. We need to make sure we deliver as efficiently as those without that admin bill. And that's why we've chosen the, the, the committee star, star structure with the, with the Staffordshire Leaders Board. Okay, so uh, I move that recommendation. Uh, Councillor Prichard has seconded. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a break. Uh, <laughs> the next report is item nine is write offs. Uh, Councillor Bailey. Thank you, Chair. Um, this report obviously details the debt written off for quarter three of the 2021 22 financial year. I won't go through all the figures because hopefully everybody's read them. Write offs are not comparable compared to the previous year in respect of council tax and business rates, and this is mainly down to the fact that the revenues team been focused on providing levels of grant support and other reliefs to local residents and businesses. There are limited write-offs for business rates at the moment as the revenues, again, department are working with businesses to try and work out suitable arrangements to pay off debts accumulated as a result of the pandemic. Likewise, the principle applies for both council tax and sundry income balances and at present write-offs are not significant at this stage. However, the team have reported sound income collection performance for the period, which is, I think, which is great given the current circumstances. Whilst reported collection rates are marginally ahead of target at the moment, it is still too early to know what effect the pandemic will ultimately have on the economy and our residents' ability to pay in the future. It should also be noted that collection levels for prior year debts have returned close to normal levels. In terms of the debt written back onto accounts, there are a number of scenarios whereby if we receive positive information, we will pursue the debt, again, even if it's been previously written off. And that's obviously our duty that we're accountable to all the council tax payers, uh, rate payers in Tamworth. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Anybody have any questions or comments? Councillor Pritchard. Uh, just, just more a comment. Um, say it's still odd not presenting these reports after about 16 years of doing them, and that was probably the longest intro we've ever had to a write-off report at Cabinet. Um, so well done. Um, I, I say I know finance do everything they can to maximise the return for the authority and, and take every steps they can. Um, to both minimise loss and, and recover owed debt. So uh, I just support the work of finance still on that. Thank you, Councillor Pritchard. Uh, I think it's also important to say that whilst we're writing this off, if ever there is an opportunity to claw this debt back, we will still take it uh, because uh, the finance team, when it comes to debt, are like a, a dog with a bone. And whilst we write it off, they, they won't let go. Uh, that was a compliment, sir. <laughs> uh, do you have anything further to add, Councillor Bailey? No, just, you know, thank you to Stefan and his team for the great job that they do. Okay, so uh, you pro make, uh, propose the recommendation. I'm happy to move, yeah. yeah. Uh, do I have a seconder? Councillor Pritchard seconds. All those in favour? Okay, that is carried. Thank you very much. And that brings us to the end of the public part of the meeting. So I move exclusion of the press and public in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities, executive arrangements, meetings and accessing information, England Regulations 2012, Section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, that the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraphs 1, 2 and or paragraph 3 of part 1 of the schedule of 12A of the Acts of the Public Interest in which and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. I move. Councillor Pritchard seconds. All those in favour? Thank you very much. That is carried.